Jonestown was an MK Ultra project. But now, and that's right out of the government printing office, right out of the FOIA. You can, you can get this information just like I did, and you can look in, this, in the book, and you will see government headings from the uh, Freedom of Information Act government printing office of various investigations done by Congress, the 93rd Congress, the 95th Congress, and so on and so forth. And if you go to your library and access those under those headings, you will come up with this information. But let me give you a little information about uh, Jonestown. In French Guiana, uh, the property for Jonestown, uh, the, the money came through a Mexico City bank and it was traced directly to the Central Intelligence Agency. Jonestown was not a mind control project. Mind control had long since been perfected. Jonestown was a biological weapons project. And the worst part about this whole thing is there's two other projects twice the size that have been going on, that were going on in 1977, and they're still going on today. Now, that is very much reminiscent of the house of uh, uh, prostitution for little children that were being used in Washington, D.C., that you read about and even in your, I don't want to call them newspapers anymore. Yeah, the birdcage liners. Thank you. But there was a house of prostitution that these congressmen were using that was using little children in there. Well, nobody ever thought to ask, what happened to the little children that were being used? I'll tell you, they were moved right down the street, two and a half blocks away, to three other houses of prostitution that still operate to this day. It's interesting to note that Wayne Cox idolized Jim Jones. He also idolized Charles Manson. This is the same Wayne Cox that's down there in Chatham, Louisiana, an occult serial killer who is immune from prosecution right now. He's free for reasons of national security. What is the name of the Jesuit order you spoke about? Um, I mentioned in the, the book that they referred to themselves, not only the Jesuits, but this olive at the top of this uh, New World Order uh, pyramid as the Order of the Rose. Um, please discuss the connection between the New World Order and the dominant network media, uh, for example, ABC, NBC, CBS, CNN, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, information control, folks, is mind control. Need I say more? What you hear and what you see is all you have to base your decisions upon. We're being brainwashed. Um, Monarch and MK Ultra program started in 1953. Do you see it? I, I don't know that. I didn't know that Monarch project started in 53. Um, I would um, be very interested in knowing how whoever wrote me this note knows that. If if uh, you want to speak to me later. Do you see any connections between government and Satanists? No, I see a, a, a direct correlation between satanic um, activity as well as blood traumas and other horrific types of abuse that is used uh, as a part of their hmm, religious belief. But um, I don't downplay the subject of Satanism. It's just that when you say aliens did it, demons did it, I can't do anything about a demon. I can't do anything about an alien. I can do something about a human being that says they're a demon and says they're an alien. And you all can affect those kind of folks too. But I don't know of any way to go after a demon. And I don't know any way to go after an alien. And I'm not saying there's not aliens and I'm not saying there's not demons. But I want to tell you all something. Every single patient up until about 1982 that was presented with dissociative identity disorder or back in those days, MPD or multiple personality disorder was diagnosed with demons and they went right off the edge. And if that didn't get them, the how, do you how does that make you feel got them? Or your session is up, got them. When they were right in the middle of an ab reaction, that's re-experiencing the trauma. So the poor patient was either, was either gonna be subjected to a exorcism by a, a religious, a good intention in most cases a religious person or an exorcism of sorts from their therapist 
because they didn't have any other information. They didn't know what they were looking at. They didn't realize the brain stem was scarred, very much like they have multiple sclerosis, and that you can get people to retrain the brain through, right through the auditory, but you can't say, let me get that demon out, or, oh, gee, I hope the alien doesn't come get you tonight, because you're reinforcing program. So, no, I'm not downplaying Satanism. I'm not downplaying any sort of religious belief. What I am downplaying is a belief that it's something other than human beings. Take one. How much mind control is in the mass media? For example, last year there's no such thing as black helicopters. As of last month, everybody knows the military has black helicopters. Um, Mind manipulation in the media is extensive, and they're controlling us by controlling our information. The same way that they're controlling children through the information that they're being fed in the school system to answer another question, yes, it is in our school systems now. And the computers have actually been changed where the history has been altered, and, and, and people like Thomas Jefferson even left out of history in order that our children be brought up with socialistic values. So just as our children are being manipulated in the school system, all of us are being manipulated through the medias. We need to be especially careful that when trauma occurs in this country, that we're not losing any more of our freedoms, that our freedoms aren't eroding further because they know that the traumatic effects on your mind are making you more susceptible and more suggestible and receptive to whatever controls they want to implement. So we need to be very alert to this and very um, aware of it. Um, here's a good question. Are many FBI and CIA personnel under mind control? I've heard they are. Um, these are incredibly good questions, y'all. Uh, and I'm going to answer this question the best way I know how. I don't personally know anybody under mind control working for the CIA or the FBI. I know a lot of them that are under information control. Um, I do know this, that the CIA and the FBI recruits Mormons with favoritism who have just come off of their mission. Thank you. Now, these gentlemen are very receptive to taking orders. They are highly suggestible and they are ones who I know are being manipulated. There is a disproportionate number of Mormons in both the FBI and the CIA. I do not find that to be an indictment of the Mormons. Matter of fact, we'll be in Salt Lake City speaking on the 13th of November, addressing a number of concerned Mormons because of this very subject. Staying in, in the religious aspect here, what do you think of Linda Blood's book, The New Satanist? Could you talk about Michael Aquino and his MO? Yes, absolutely. Michael Aquino is a primary mind control programmer of mine. Um, Linda Blood is... is By the um, way, he's a litigant, too. He sues everybody that ever talks about him. Including Linda Blood. Including Linda Blood. Except us. Now, he got on national television and said, yeah, I know that, Mark Phillips. He is going to be the destruction of all organized religion in this country. <laughs> well, now there's an indictment. <laughs> okay, it's, Michael Aquino is the founder of the occult temple of Set that's proliferating on our military bases. He is with the psychological warfare division. Was, was. Was with the psychological warfare division. Um, his, some of his power is eroding thanks to the exposure that he's getting through people like Linda Blood. And it was my experience with Michael Aquino that he does not believe in the power of Satan. He does not believe in spirituality at all. That's not a part of what he does. What he does believe in is the power of trauma on the human mind and the compartmentalization of memory through high voltage stun guns. How does mind control work? Whoever asked me that question, I hope they bought a book. Why aren't people able to see beyond mind control once they're controlled? Then it wouldn't be mind control. It would be foot control or hand control or finger control or eye control. There's no conscious thought. There's no conscious awareness under mind control. You cannot think to get out of it. There's no reason to get out of it because you don't even think that you're being abused. You don't think. That's the simplest analogy I can give you. You are a reactionary robot. How do you get deprogrammed? 
With love. Yeah, well. A lot of patience. The, the, the modality for doing that is in our book. It's a 15-step one, and no therapist can legally do it. I can, and I'm not doing it anymore. How come the, how come the powers that be haven't killed either of you? Two, two, two reasons. Uh, how many people in here believe in God? All right. Those that have your hand up know half of the reason. The other reason is we followed a very careful path to the proverbial barn. We did not make some of the mistakes that some of our predecessors have, for instance, uh, in the Ends Law case and others. It's not that I'm any smarter. It's just that I listen well and I know how to trust. Therefore, I know who to trust even those that I have not seen. Another, another reason, um, too, would be they've got so many fires to stomp out now, and people bringing truth out that, you know, we're just, we're just one of many, and besides, um, so, you know, stopping us is not going to suppress the truth. Were you ever at the Bohemian Club in Northern California? Yes. Um, there's a, a chapter in the book pertaining, pertaining to Bohemian Grove and some of the meetings that went on there between um, the politicians and, and world leaders that were, were involved. That's a, a place that needs to be exposed for exactly what it is. Okay. Um, when I run into the same things over and over again, uh, I'm going to... I'm not going to re These are answer excellent them. questions. They're all excellent. Someone asked, considering the things you've seen, the places you've been, why are you still alive today? I, I can tell you from personal experience, even though I can't tell you all the places I've been, I wonder how I'm still alive today. But her, there, it remains a total mystery to me, and it always will. Now, her body bears the scars. She, she has some of the things that they can't take away, they can't deny. Like uh, Mr. Byrd, if he were undressed before Congress and the nation, there are things he can't deny. And uh, Mr. Cheney as well. Um, but uh, there are undeniable scars that this lady carries that are not on her mind. They're on her brain stem, all over her body, thousands of stun gun scars, and a vaginal mutilation that defies the worst horror story you can imagine. Now, those are things that people don't do to themselves. Now, I had, a, I had a, uh, a CIA boy who was pawning himself off as an enforcement officer with uh, uh, DEA who was on assignment to uh, um, uh, U.S. Customs in Florida. That should have been a tip-off. He said, you know, FBI believes she had that done to herself. I said, of course she did, with a pocket knife, moron. I said, how in the world would anybody even find anybody evil enough to do something like that. And I tracked it down. It's an ancient Egyptian practice taught to Michael Aquino. And I understand from her that he is alleged to be the one that told her handler, Alex Houston, how to use carving knives to do it. He bragged that he was a carver. He carved people. Could you please elaborate on Ronald Reagan's involvement? Oh, yes, I could for a long time. I wish we had more time. Uh, I, I, I details need, are in the book. I, I need to bring up Ronald Reagan's situation. A, a number of us, you know, I, I've got my wall in my office covered in imitations from Ronald Reagan, from George Bush, and some other presidents. One I don't even want to mention that I was invited to dinners and inaugurations and all sorts of things through my relationships with people in the community and, and the State Department. When I heard this information, I wasn't shocked about Ronald Reagan because when I was with Ampex Corporation in the early 70s, Ronald Reagan was governor of California and he was in big, big trouble because he had encouraged a MK Ultra mind control experiment to be instituted in the Vacaville prison here in California and it made the congressional record. And Ronald Reagan is the governor that was the only governor of any state in the United States that got caught instituting trauma-based, chemical-based, 
frontal lobotomy, and so on, and so on, and so on, and so on, mind control in our prison systems. And now it is rampant. As a matter of fact, this is the one subject you can get more information out of Congress on than any of the rest of them. Is there any um, link between the homose homosexual prostitution ring found operating out of Barney <laughs> Franks a few years ago on your topic tonight? I, I can't say that I, I can, I'm an authority on this, but I talked to a bunch of psychologists and psychiatrists, um, one of which was privy to uh, some medical um, documentation on one of the children that came out of that, and the answer is 100% yes, it's connected. How does remote viewing being done by various former military men such as Major Ed uh, Danes and Courtney Brown compare with your mind control? It's all under the guise of MK Ultra. Remote viewing, um, uh, anything. I was part of the Duke studies in 1967 and 68 um, working with the paranormal. Uh, most of the people I saw were uh, of, at that time Soviet origin. Um, uh, as a matter of fact, I didn't know we had a Cold War going on. I really didn't. I mean, there was a huge exchange of information. I, I was constantly sitting down at the table with KGB agents. And they were identified as such and handed me cards. Cards. KGB handing out cards. I couldn't even understand. The first time somebody handed me a card, I said, well, this is the end of me. He said, um, he said do you have a card? <laughs> Who is Kelly's father? That's uh, this sev several times. Wayne Cox was Kelly's father. He was her father because genetically they wanted her to have the capacity to be able to kill because she was being brought up in espionage for, for those kind of purposes. But it's interesting to note, and I think David Icke, a dear friend of ours, <coughs> stated, stated it eloquently that just as knowledge is neither good nor bad, it depends who has control of it. By that same token, genetics, for as, as powerful an in, of an influence they are, they are not stronger than the human spirit. Kelly's, Kelly's soul is just so beautiful, and her loving capacity is enormous, and the, the love that she operates from is extensive. And she wants this information out for humanity's sake. So in spite of the genetics of, and of who Kelly's father is, um, she's absolutely a, a, a beautiful, beautiful child. How did you get the number of operatives in this country? Uh, I don't know. Who asked me that question? Who did it? <laughs> um, I got the answer to that uh, three ways. There's a uh, catalog company called Budapest out of Washington that's a catalog of spy books. And ours will soon be in it, hopefully. Um, and there's a number of books in there. I can't remember the title now. But the New York Times also reads a, that catalog and orders those books. Uh, they're done by Stockwell and everybody, every other name you can imagine, and Philip Agee. And uh, Philip Agee, I don't, I don't have a lot of respect for at all, except for one thing. George Bush stood up on national television and said he hated him more than any man on earth. <laughs> I just, just couldn't help but love the guy. You say in your book that mind control slaves were permitted any drug except marijuana. Why? It's an excellent question. The effects of marijuana on the brain are not conducive to mind control. It doesn't mean you can't be traumatized and put under mind control. It just means it screws up the programming. Because it actually opens neuron pathways in the brain. It, it expands thought. I'm not going to stand here and be, um, speak pro-marijuana because... No, because somebody I, be putting it in my car and popping me for it. <laughs> But I am anti-marijuana anti because we see all these ads on TV and everything, and, and even, even uh, Dole and Clinton in, in their campaigns are saying, what's well, adults said, um, um, guns, violence, and marijuana, you know, as if, as if it's so violent because it is not conducive to mind control. They want it off the streets more than they want their drugs like cocaine off the street. Marijuana is especially targeted. Um, I don't promote the use of marijuana as a band-aid for um, mind control because, again, knowledge is our only defense against it. Um, tell us about the congressmen and women who are helping you. Yeah, right. <laughs> I'll tell you one, Bob Clement, 
I grew up with him. Uh, matter of fact, when his father was governor, I used to go up with him, and I remember I was tra highly traumatized by something I saw at the governor's mansion, which I'm not going to tell on Bob, because it didn't have anything to do with him. But there are a number of, we've got a number of plain congressmen and congresswomen that are helping us from behind the scenes. Uh, that's part of that 50% equation that we're still here. The information that we released, we released to every member in Congress at the same time. And I had four congressmen, one in particular, hand carrying every one of these packets to the con respective congresswoman or congressman. That took a lot of effort on their behalf and a lot of nerve, since at that time I did not have all that information validated, but they had received information from members of the, of the Justice Department and from U.S. Customs that Kathy O'Brien was a valid case and that they were able to validate more than half of what was, what was in that packet. Um, George Bush was handed a packet, and uh, uh, George Bush, he, he nasty with me. He said I threatened his life, which is farther saying the truth, because uh, the congressman that delivered it, it happened to have been a lawyer, as most of them are, unfortunately. <laughs> and um, he, uh, he had read the stuff, and they were trying every way on earth to indict me for everything you can imagine. Um, uh, but the b bottom line was this, uh, this particular congressman said that he'd wear a sandwich sign before, uh, before the news media if that was going to be the case. So the FBI and the Justice Department just humiliated me and made me come in and get my finger. I said, you guys got my fingerprints more times than a criminal. I said, I, I, I work for the community. I work for the Defense Department. I said, well, I, don't, I don't get it. What, well, you just need a fresh picture? Why don't you see my mother? Pay uh, special attention to those members of Congress who believe that you have a right to information. There's an ongoing effort right now to repeal the 1947 National Security Act because they, they know that you need this information. Does it matter who wins the election, Clinton or Dole? I didn't think so until I went to Arkansas. and. Oh, I wish I could tell you what I found out. Yes, it does make a difference. They want Clinton in. I guess because they want to prove that there is a, such a phenomenon as a revolving door. <laughs> in and out. <laughs> um, what is your relationship with Mark, and why did he rescue you? <laughs> those, those details are going to be in our... our